Welcome to Your Health. Information about today's top health topics direct from Brigham and Women's Hospital experts. We want to remind you that this information should not replace the advice or recommendations from your health care provider. Hello, I'm Dr. Michael Weinblatt. I'm a rheumatologist at the Brigham Women's Hospital. I'm co-director of clinical rheumatology at the Brigham and uh, co-director of our Rheumatoid Arthritis Center. Rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic inflammatory disease that affects the joint, leading to pain and swelling of the joint and eventual potential destruction. It's a generalized disease, so it not only affects the joints, but actually affects many organs in the body. And patients with this disease will frequently have symptoms of weight loss, fatigue, and morning stiffness. We project about 0.7% of the population have this disease. Um, so that's several million Americans. It affects women more commonly than men. It classically begins somewhere between the ages of 20 and 50 years of age. But we appreciate that it can occur in young children. And we also know that it can occur in geriatric patients between the ages of 70 and 90 with new onset disease. So rheumatoid arthritis can involve multiple joints. In particular, it frequently involves the small joints of the hands, the proximal joints, and the metacarpal joints, and it frequently involves the feet, the metatarsal joints, so patients can wake up and have stiffness involving their feet and feel like they're walking on crushed ice or marbles, and this can be a difficult diagnosis. In addition, it involves the wrists, elbows, shoulders, and hips and knees and ankles, so it's a generalized illness that affects small joints of hands and feet as well as large joints. It's generally a disease that affects both sides of the body. So if they have involvement of the right wrist, they frequently have involvement of the left. And unlike osteoarthritis, which is a disease of cartilage, rheumatoid arthritis is noted by a lot of stiffness in the morning. So the first question patients always ask is, is it too early to see someone with, with vague symptoms? And our view is that if you have more than 35 or 40 minutes of morning stiffness, if you have swelling of the small joints of your hands, if you have pain involved, or you have pain involving your feet, or you have swelling in other joints, uh, you really need to be evaluated by your physician because the data clearly shows that early diagnosis and intervention with drug therapy can really improve this disease and stop progression both functionally as well as radiographically. In the last 10 years, there's been an incredible revolution in the management of rheumatoid arthritis. 20 years ago, patients with this disease faced a course of destruction of the joint, deformity, disability. So what's changed? What's changed in the last 15 years are new drugs which clearly change the course of the disease. One of the major drugs that's used to treat rheumatoid arthritis is an old drug, a drug called methotrexate, which at high doses is an anti-cancer drug. But studies that we initially began in the early 1980s at the Brigham demonstrate that low-dose weekly methotrexate is a very effective drug in controlling disease activity. In fact, since we began those early studies in 1982, methotrexate has now become the standard therapy worldwide for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. But methotrexate by itself may not be sufficient in 60 or 70 percent of patients. And what's changed in the last 10 years is the development of drugs that are, are developed genetically. These recombinant proteins called biologic response modifiers. In particular, drugs that block an inflammatory substance called tumor necrosis factor. And those drugs, when used by themselves or when combined with methotrexate, can induce a response in 60 to 80 percent of patients. They not only improve rapidly the number of painful and swollen joints, they improve the fatigue associated with the disease, they stabilize function, and they stop x-ray progression. So those drugs in combination with methotrexate have truly changed the natural history of the disease. Well, I think all patients are interested in making themselves better, and rheumatoid arthritis is no different than any other illness. There's been a lot of interest in what we call complementary therapies. Many of the complementary therapies that patients use don't work, but there are some that clearly work, including diets that are high in fish oil or dietary supplements in fish oil uh, or borage seed oil or evening primrose oil. There are good anti-inflammatories. So there are many things that they can do through a good dietary nutritional program, 
stopping smoking and exercise. Well, in the last uh, several years, we've learned a lot about the genetics of this illness. Research that's been done at the Brigham have identified several new genes associated with rheumatoid arthritis. And we know that the disease occurs more commonly in families, but it's not a classically inherited disease. So you can have these genetic markers and never get the illness. The cause of rheumatoid arthritis is still unknown. In fact, that's one of the major areas of research that we're doing at the Brigham as well as other centers worldwide is to determine what it is and what causes the disease. Despite a lot of knowledge about what occurs after the disease begins, we still don't know what actually induces the process. Uh, leading thoughts include viruses that could trigger the illness in a patient with the right genetic profile. Um, we know that certain infections can trigger the illness, uh, but to date at least there's not one specific cause. Our major interest in rheumatology at the Brigham is in rheumatoid arthritis. We, we have a large clinical interest. We see over 3,500 patients a year with rheumatoid arthritis, making it one of the largest centers in the world for the care of patients with RA. And we have a large clinical trial program for over 20 years, we've studied almost every major therapy for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis, beginning with methotrexate and now moving through the biologic response modifiers. And finally, we have a large patient education program. We have a large patient support group network that's been set up where we can partner patients with the disease, with coaches with the disease, to help them explore their illness and talk about ways to make their disease better. I think the most important thing a patient uh, who has new onset rheumatoid arthritis needs to know is number one, we can modify the course of this disease. This is not the disease of 10 years ago. In fact, in 60 to 70 percent of patients, we essentially can either com partially uh, stop or completely stop this disease with drug therapy. Thanks for watching Your Health from Brigham and Women's Hospital. A reminder Your Health is intended for educational purposes only. It should not take the place of advice or recommendations from your health care provider. If you have questions about what you've heard, please consult with your doctor.